Good afternoon and welcome to Fortress Press Live, where we connect you with the people and passions behind the books we publish here at Fortress Press. Our guest today is Scott Tunseth, who serves as a general editor for reference here at Fortress Press. Scott, welcome to Fortress Press Live. Thanks, Sean. It's good to be here. Glad to be part of this episode. Well, Scott, why don't you take a few moments and introduce yourself to the Fortress Press Live audience? Sure. I guess since it's baseball season, I'll use a baseball analogy. I'm probably the grizzled veteran on the team. I've played all the positions except first base since I'm not tall enough to uh, be a good target over at first base. I've spent 23 years or parts of 23 years at Augsburg Fortress and had lots of different roles. Actually, I, I'm surprised to still be in publishing. I went to Luther Seminary for MDiv degree to, to be a pastor and ended up at graduate school in biblical studies and then into the parish for a while, but eventually back at Augsburg Fortress, where I actually did some work when I was going to seminary. I came back to be senior editor for adult resources, curriculum development resources, and spent most of my time here at Augsburg Fortress doing that kind of work. Spent a little time with the American Bible Society working on a project called the Learning Bible, so I was away from Augsburg Fortress for five years doing that project. But came back in 2000, and I've had a myriad of different jobs and roles since I've been back. I've actually been in Fortress twice. A number of years ago, I was the publisher, publishing director for Fortress Press and Augsburg Books. But eventually, I went back to the congregational side, worked on a project called Lutheran Study Bible, and worked on a number of Bible study resources for the Evangelical Lutheran Church's emphasis called Book of Faith. And two and a half years ago, I came back to Augsburg Fortress in this new role as general editor for reference resources. It's really kind of a new job in this team, and it's been fun to get it off the ground. Scott, thanks for helping us to get to know you a little bit better. Now, as you mentioned, your work on the Fortress Press team currently is as general editor for reference. Tell us a bit about this role. What does it look like on a day-to-day basis? And Really, what are some of the things that give you a drive and a passion for the things that you do each day here at Fortress Press? I would say one of the things that characterizes this role is really I do more development than acquisitions. What that means is it taps into my experience developing other projects that I've done in the past. Many of the projects I have have multiple editors, multiple contributors, maybe even multiple volumes. So a lot of the work that I do becomes project management. I do a lot of editing as well, but it starts with managing the project. So a lot of my job has to do with keeping all the plates spinning in the air at the same time, or on schedule at least. I also work with the acquisitions editors to plan and develop multi-volume series in, in our core areas of biblical studies, theology, and Christian history. When I think about What excites me about the work, a few things come to mind. First, I'm really privileged to work with great colleagues who are committed to providing outstanding and creative resourcing for the academy. That's the first thing. The second thing, I'm also privileged to work with many outstanding scholars, scholar editors and contributors, and just working with them and working through the content with them makes every day a learning experience for me. My work in reference gives me opportunities to keep stretching my own development muscles, so to speak. Developing projects means concepting and planning from the ground up, and that's slightly different than straight acquisitions, where you take book projects that come across your desk and decide, yes, no, how can they be modified? Of course, when we determine a need and we're going to develop a product in reference, from a content standpoint, that is, we still have to acquire those assets. We still have to acquire the content by inviting contributors to participate in the vision that we've put together. And sometimes we create that vision with outside academic advisors, but it all kind of falls together. And so the acquisitions part of it for me is acquiring the content for projects we've already decided that we're going to develop. We'll, of course, listen to great ideas that might have a reference sort of tone to them, but It really, most of the planning starts on our end with those projects. Well, speaking of new projects, it'd be interesting to get a little bit of your perspective 
when you're considering sometimes maybe a proposal or an idea or, you know, there's a whole lot of brainstorming going on when you're trying to come up with new reference projects. What are some of the things you really look for? or What are the things that really stand out for you as you're considering what do we publish next? I would say that, well, there's a few criteria that we have to use. I'd say, number one, we look at our core values and uh, do the projects we're doing fit the primary publishing categories. I've mentioned them before, Bible, theology, Christian history. So that's kind of a given. We also look at the market. We ask the question, is there a need in the market? What is the need? What unique perspective can we bring to this project? What can we um, add to the mix, bring to the table? A third thing, I think we want to always think about how we can be creative in our approach, knowing that the development resources that we have are, are somewhat limited. How can we get the best resource for the budgeting that we have to work with and working with the people that we know can do the job for us? I think another thing, we're, we're constantly pushing the innovation question. How can we move with trends without being trendy? or simply being trendy? How can we stay ahead of the information development and delivery curve, but perhaps without taking risks that our budget can't bear or that our audience isn't ready for? So balancing all those things as we think about the projects, and we're always looking for creative, interesting projects, and reference isn't just kind of a stuffy book these days. We're thinking about all kinds of different ways of expanding the definition of what reference is, including electronic reference. Just kind of in summary, I'd say that it's an exciting time to be in academic publishing for theological education. There are more challenges than ever, as we know. There's shrinking budgets, there's shrinking enrollments in seminaries, there's shrinking appetites even for purchasing and reading books. And yet, I feel like we're really up for the challenge. We've got our rally caps on, in a way. It's another baseball analogy, forgive me. But we're posting a lot of come from behind wins, I think, in the kind of development work that we're doing. I know that many books come across your desk, but if you could only pick, you know, you know a handful of recent projects, you know, that could be some that are already released and some that are forthcoming, well, which ones have you most excited? Sure, that's pretty easy. Because I work on a limited number of projects, but they're big projects. We've got some exciting ones two that have just released. The first one is Fortress Commentary on the Bible. It's a two-volume commentary, New Testament volume and Old Testament Apocrypha volume. We've had great help from some scholar editors on these, the Old Testament volumes. The editors are Gail Yee, Matt Coomer, and Hugh Page. The New Testament uh, the editors were Margaret Amer, Cynthia Briggs Kittredge, and David Sanchez. And we work closely, I and Neil Elliott, our acquisitions editor for Biblical Studies, work closely with those editors to work with all of the contributors. There are over 70 contributors to the volume. That volume is out now. It's been released. We're looking forward to people enjoying working with that commentary. The second one I wanted to say a word about is a project called Galilee in the late Second Temple and Mishnaic Periods. It's uh, actually a two-volume set. The first volume came out, or is released this year, this summer, and it's on life, culture, and society in Galilee. Several contributors there also, articles, with lots of maps and accompanying illustrations, photographs. And the second volume of those two will come out next year, in fall of 2015, and that will focus on the archaeological record of cities and towns in Galilee in the 1st century B.C., 1st and 2nd century A.D. If I could, one more project that is really exciting. One of the first ones I began with creating when I came on board is a project called the Annotated Luther Series. There actually will be six volumes, and we're really working on this leading up to the anniversary of Luther's posting of the 95 Theses in 2017, which will be a big celebration. But we're taking some kind of the best of the best of Luther and putting them into six different volumes with extensive introductions and annotations. Again, working with a great set of general editors, Hans Hillerbrand, Kiersey Sterna, and Tim Wengert, 
who helped to kind of develop what these volumes would look like and what content would be in each volume, and then helped us recruit volume editors for the six volumes. The first two volumes will be out next summer, and we hope three more will be in 2016 and the final one in 2017. Another great project, multiple contributors, lots of Luther and Reformation experts involved in this project. All right. Well, Scott, thanks for giving us uh, kind of an overview of some of the things that have kept you busy this past year, and we'll be keeping you busy well into the future, it sounds like. Folks, it's time to bring this episode of Fortress Press Live to a close. If you'd like to find out more about the books mentioned in today's episode, you can check out the show notes, which you'll be able to find at fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 016, as this is episode 16 of the podcast. And Scott, thanks for giving us a window into your world as a general editor for reference here at Fortress Press. And thanks for being a part of this episode of Fortress Press Live. Glad to be here. Thanks for taking the time to listen in on my discussion today with Scott Tunseth. We hope that this has been an enjoyable listening experience for you. I do want to encourage you to head over to iTunes and leave us a review if you haven't already. It may not seem like a big deal, but it's an important way you can help new listeners find the show. Again, if you'd like to join in on the conversation or read the show notes for this episode, head over to fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 016. Until next time, this is your host Sean Tabbitt, signing off.